Apple is digging in in its fight over encryption technology with the government. On Monday, CEO Tim Cook sent an email to employees reiterating that Apple will not unlock an iPhone used by a shooter in December's San Bernardino terror attack and urged the government to withdraw its demands. Cook also suggested Apple would take part in a, quote, commission or other panel of experts on intelligence, technology, and civil liberties to discuss the implications for law enforcement, national security, privacy, and personal freedoms. While Cook says Apple has never unlocked an iPhone for law enforcement purposes, it has extracted data from an iPhone before, but only in devices running operating systems prior to iOS 8, which was released in September of 2014. Cook says the complexity of iOS 8, which ran the iPhone used by the San Bernardino shooter, renders the data extraction process obsolete. But the fight between Apple and the Justice Department isn't just about national security, privacy, and individual rights. Why the government hasn't been able to retrieve data from the iPhone is also in dispute. Both sides agree the government locked itself out of the phone by incorrectly entering the password too many times. But the FBI says Apple should unlock the phone's iCloud account to gain access to the phone's history. Cook also reiterated designing a passcode workaround program would weaken the security of all iPhones and set a legal precedent that could set the stage for future demands for surveillance and the recording of conversations. FBI Director James Comey disagrees. In a blog post on Sunday, he wrote, we simply want the chance with a search warrant to try to guess the terrorist passcode without the phone essentially self-destructing and without it taking a decade to guess correctly. That's it. Maybe the phone holds the key to finding more terrorists, maybe it doesn't, but we can't look the survivors in the eye or ourselves in the mirror if we don't follow this lead.